Hey, what's up? Welcome back once again, Security Plus Preppers. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus Practice Questions of the Day. Every single day I'm going to ask you two questions to help you as you continue with your studies. Let's go ahead and jump right in it. All right, first question. You're reviewing the password policy settings for your organization and you see that the minimum password age value is currently set to three. My question to you is, what does this mean? Here's your answer choices. Go ahead and click on pause, give those a read, figure out what the right answer is, and then when you're ready, click play, we'll talk it through. All right, the first choice says that passwords are good for three days and then have to be changed. No, that would be more akin to the maximum password age setting. And I can assure you that if you set your passwords to expire every three days, you're gonna be going through a lot of employees because they're gonna be so annoyed and pissed off that they have to change their password every three days that they're gonna go find somewhere else to work. Second option says that the user cannot reuse any of their previous three passwords. This is also not the right answer. Um, that is more akin to the idea of a password history setting of how many passwords are gonna be remembered. Choice number three is the right choice, saying that once a password is changed, it cannot be changed again for three days. So when you go and you set the minimum password age, what you are doing more often than not is keeping users from just changing their password over and over and over, once right after the other, to get back to their preferred password. Users are amazing in how sneaky they can be sometimes, and so we have to protect them from themselves. And so a minimum password age setting is something that a lot of organizations will go in and implement to keep that user from changing their password six times in a five minute window to get themselves back to the same password they were just using. Uh, that's one of the more common reasons that people would go in and implement this. All right, to talk through the other choices on the list in case you should encounter those someday. Um, if you type the password wrong three times, the account gets locked out. Um, that's an account lockout threshold. So uh, that's a very famous one. I got all kinds of things that I could talk about on that, but I'll save it for another day. But uh, that's not the right answer. We already know what the right answer is. Well, let's go ahead and re review the rest of these. The next to last item on the list says that uh, three minutes have to pass before the incorrect password entry counter resets. Uh, that's again, not the right answer. This is something called an observation window or a, uh, a reset window for, if I were to type my password wrong twice, knowing that the third time I type it wrong, I'm gonna get it locked out. If I type it twice and stop, how long would I have to wait in the form of minutes before that counter would reset back to zero and I could have a fresh three tries? And then the last option, still incorrect, is that accounts that are locked out will be automatically re-enabled after three minutes. Uh, no, that's an account lockout duration. Um, this is a setting that you would choose to use if you wanted accounts that had been locked out, probably because somebody typed their password wrong too many times, for it to automatically re-enable itself after a certain number of minutes. So again, not our answer, but yet another setting that is available for you to go and set up. All right, question number two coming at you. You have chosen to use TLS for all connections to your public website. You want to create a situation where security is maximized, yet you want to minimize the connection overhead involved in setting up the TLS connections. Which of these items can you employ to go in and do that? Click on pause, give them a read, think about it, and when you're ready, click play and we'll talk it through. All right, first choice on the list says that you should switch from TLS to SSL. No, don't do that. Um, I'm not gonna hate on SSL, but SSL took a big old swift kick in the teeth a couple years back. Back when the Heartbleed vulnerability came out, that caused a lot of people to start looking with a frowny face anytime somebody said SSL as opposed to TLS. Suffice to say, everybody is and has been now for many years migrating towards using TLS exclusively rather than using SSL. So in this case, that sounds like a step backwards, and that's certainly not the thing that we would wanna go in and do. Next batter on the list, it says to go in and use CRL deltas, certificate revocation list deltas. What these are, are the, uh, the lists of certificates that have been revoked since the last time the certificate revocation list was posted. And no, if you're using CRLs, it's not gonna really do anything to help you as far as connection setup. So um, they, they are an increasingly a less commonly seen mechanism for use and certainly aren't gonna do anything in order to speed up the connections if you're checking CRLs and CRL deltas. And, um, no, so that's not the right answer either. Choice number three on the list says you should use RC4 rather than AES. Nope, um, AES is pretty much what all modern web browsers use and 
unless it's buried deep down in there somewhere, I'm not aware of any option that would allow me to go in and have my web browser fall back to using RC4. It's really a negotiation that takes place between the web server and the web browser to find the, the strongest or highest common denominator that they both can support. And certainly, um, which algorithm you use to actually encrypt the data once the connection is set up doesn't really have much to do with connection overhead. Uh, or in, ter in terms of connection or s connection setup overhead, I should really say that more clearly. So the question, if you look back at it, is trying to go in and minimize the overhead involved in connection setup, not the overall overhead involved in the connection itself. Next choice says that you could enable OCSP stapling. This is the correct answer. The online certificate status protocol, OCSP, is viewed by most people as being the replacement for certificate revocation lists. And the whole idea is, is it operates more in a client server approach rather than a download a potentially big old file approach like uh, old school CRLs do. So with OCSP, you're going to go in and go to a website and then you would query an OCSP server to see whether or not that website certificate had been revoked. There's some security concerns in terms of privacy associated with that. And so a lot of people frown upon OCSP for that reason. So one of the solutions for that is OCSP stapling. And what OCSP stapling will do is it will have the web server itself periodically, usually every 15, 20 minutes or so, go to the OCSP server and get a signed status, a time stamped and signed status message regarding the validity of its own certificate and it will I believe you have my stapler. Staple it to the certificate and when it's delivered to uh, your web browser during the connection setup phase. This can restore your privacy so you're not sending a query to an OCSP server telling it the web servers that you're visiting. Um, and it can also speed up the, uh, the speed of your connection by reducing the overhead associated with it. So that's very much the answer that we're looking for right here. All right, then the final item on the list was to enable CRL checking. No, the problem with CRLs, depending upon the signing authority, is that CRLs can be big. They can be several megabytes in size. And you know, needing to download that file when you're going to visit a website can add time to the connection setup process, and that's not conducive to having this stuff be seamless and beautiful and transparent for our users. Um, so uh, we see that CRL checking is increasingly less often implemented and utilized. OCSP is largely replacing it with the possible exception of Google Chrome, but that's a different topic. Um, I actually did questions on that in previous videos. You should go check them out. But um, uh, we now have a situation where we are using OCSP, but more and more and more you have some people who are really advocating OCSP stapling as a way to preserve the client's anonymity to the OCSP server while also speeding up the connection uh, to go in and uh, get your TLS negotiation done faster. All right, nicely done. Two more questions down. Hope you did well on them. First question was on minimum password age, looking at password policy. Second question was on OCSP stapling and making sure that you have a good understanding of exactly what that is. Uh, if you like these questions, please click like. If you want to get them every single day, I'd be most appreciative if you would actually click on that subscribe button. That would be awesome. And since I do these every single day, I'm going to be looking at you again tomorrow.